So we're starting in chapter 10 of Ecclesiastes. We're going to try to get through chapters 10, 11, and 12. We'll see how we do. And uh, so far in the book of Ecclesiastes, we're in this, uh, this section of um, poetical wisdom. So it's wisdom and poetry. And uh, it was originally in Hebrew. So some of the things are kind of like, what in the world? Uh, so some things are easily explained, others are not easily explained. But the main theme is wisdom, and Solomon, who wrote the book, was the wisest man in the world, and he had everything he wanted. You can go and read in Kings uh, about how rich he was. Um, he had so much silver, uh, or he, they, he compared the silver to the amount of stone they had in Jerusalem, so... There's a ton of stone in Jerusalem, so he had a ton of silver. And he, and he uh, was so rich, he, he made it, uh, the verse says, he made it as common as stone. So, and he set out to, as an older man, to write this book uh, to encourage us and to uh, encourage the, the Jewish people. And we get a lot from it. And the main point of kind of going back, like to our first uh, video of Ecclesiastes, the main point he makes is vanity of vanities, all is vanities. So he's saying meaningless and meaningless, all is meaningless. And he's talking about life and he's taking the human um, approach or the, the human's logical approach on life. And um, like I said, there's a lot of wisdom in here, but a lot of it is that human approach. And we don't necessarily take, uh, you know, everything he says and and go literally do it. You know what I mean? Like quit our job and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff in here that we don't like go off and literally do. Because we need to know how his attitude is, what he was thinking, all this stuff, the right context and the right state of mind that he was in. So, starting off in verse 10, dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul order, odor. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. Dead flies. Purify, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Complete opposite. Not purify. Putrefy. <laughs> they dirty up. <laughs> They dirty up or cause the precious ointment to become unclean. Yeah. And they stink. So there's this precious thing. And I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Back then, ointment or perfume was this precious, valuable thing. Uh, and, and now it, it has been dirtied up. And ointment has been compared to wisdom. And it has value, and wisdom is more precious than ointment. So a little, a little bit of wrongdoing or a little bit of folly or foolishness will dirty up someone's reputation or undo, undo what he's done previously and affect his honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. And in the Bible, the right hand is like, uh, talks about strength and honor. And Jesus uh, was rose from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. And the left hand is like the weak hand or dishonor. And, and everything that, uh, everything in that kind of a, um, you know, with that illustration, it was, it's like we want to be on the right hand or we want to, we want to be on this side, not this side. And it talks about his heart, the wise man's heart, or, or his thinking, or it could be his decision making. The wise man that makes good decisions uh, is going to go down the correct road. And the, and the fool that makes bad decisions is going to go down the wrong road. So it's kind of like there's this side and this side. And, and the way we choose things and the way we think about things and decide things leads us down a certain path 
And the wise man is going to choose the things of God, and God is going to lead him down the paths of righteousness, right? And the fool is not going to choose God. The fool in his heart says there is no God, and he's going to choose the path of destruction. And uh, it doesn't look like the path of destruction. Uh, it may not be obvious at the time. It may look fun. It may look exciting. You know, uh, the right path is always going to be the hardest path, and the uh, the path was with, with um, you know, the struggles and uh, it's it's been said that the correct path is like going upstream against the current while everybody is going downstream. The easy thing is to go downstream with everybody else. Any dead fish can swim downstream. Any dead fish can swim downstream? Wow. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's like, yeah, true and makes a, a, a great statement. So where's your heart and which, which, which side are you, you going to? Which road are you making decisions and going down? Even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks wisdom and he shows everything that he, he shows everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post for consolation pacifies great offense. Um, if the king was mad at you, like, don't, don't get scared and quit, you know. Uh, today we would say, you know, if the boss is, like, upset with you or has an issue with you, don't just get upset and throw your arms up and quit and say, I'm out of here or I'm being unfairly treated. Uh, sit down and talk with them, you know. Um, if you, if you talk, if you have an agreement and you come to terms that like washes away the the issue it pacifies the offense it no longer is an offense you know if you were i think a lot of things in life when it comes to dealing with other people if you were to just sit down and talk and it's hard in the moment you know and we want to get excited and we want our emotion our emotions come up you know but uh a lot of things can be solved with just hey like what's going on hey what do you think the solution is how can we make this better? Uh, sometimes we have to admit that we're sorry. You know, hey, you were right. What can we do to fix this? And and that washes away all of the offense and all of that. That anger doesn't have to come up and doesn't have to be expressed. There's an evil I have seen under the sun as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity. While the rich sit in a lowly place, I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. So everything is backwards as it should be. The prince should be up on the horse, right? And the servant should be walking on the dirt road. Uh, you know, the, the wrong person is being put in the higher spot, you know. Um, everything's backwards. And, and that, this is kind of like real life, you know, the person who should be up in a position, you know, hey, look at this person, he, he has that experience, and he's come from that background, and he's in that profession, and this is the guy who should be promoted, and he doesn't get promoted, you know what I mean? If this guy's promoted, what, how in the world did he ever get promoted? Um, life sometimes seems backwards, um... The people who um, we think should be politicians are politicians, and then we look at our politicians, and then it's like, how in the world, you know, did people ever vote for you? And look at these bad decisions you're making, you know. Um, the 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 perfect person is never going to be in the perfect place all the time, and and this is part of life when we uh, when we rely on God and we go, you know, God, I know you're in control. And I can't control everything. And and even in my own life, I can't control everything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cast my cares on you, the word says. And things are gonna look backwards and things are not aren't gonna make any sense. How in the world did that ever happen? Like that's totally doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean we have to it doesn't mean we lose all hope. You know, that's why we need to be in prayer in the word. Things start to be 
my my cares and worries start to be put on God. The stuff that I allow uh, to come upon my shoulders and weigh me down, life, you know, just every little thing in life, if I pile it all up, it's going to weigh me down. But if I, if, if a big thing to a small thing, if I put that on God, hey God, this is what's going on, then it's, it's in his court now, right? And what perfect person or deity, you know, to, to, to handle things. Um, he who digs a pit will fall into it. And he who breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them. And he who splits wood may be endangered by it. Uh, I can't stop at every little thing. These things are just obvious like things. If an axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. So all these things... Uh, he is listing and he's saying, look, look at what wisdom does uh, or the value of wisdom in our life brings success or keeps us safe, you know, or keeps us prepared or wisdom could come in a form of like a warning. You know what I mean? Like, hey, maybe before we work on this electrical, we should turn the, the power off, you know, or maybe uh, before we work on the roof, we should put a guardrail up. You know, I'm, I'm in construction, so all of my little one-liners are going to be, you know, about construction. But just all, all these little things. Wisdom is applying your knowledge. Working smarter. Working smarter. If I am trying to chop wood with a doll axe, it's going to take twice the energy, twice as long. Does sharpening your axe, so here's the question, does sharpening your axe take more time than taking twice as many swings to chop a log? You know what I mean? Yeah, but when you put, take twice as many swings, you burn twice as many calories. You burn twice as many calories? <laughs> so if you want to chop, burn more calories, <laughs> chop wood with a dull axe. Just get a mallet and hit the wood. Wisdom says it's unsafe to do that, right? Because it could, you know, like a sharp knife. But, but wisdom uh, helps the situation, like I said, keeps us safe. Um, godly wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or the beginning of wisdom. You want your life to change? Fear the Lord, you know. Uh, we're, not, we're not scared of the Lord, but we're to reverence Him, you know. And... and and interesting enough, that term in the Old Testament for the Lord, it also had to do with casting away all other idols. So I'm choosing God and all these other, other things in my life that are not God, I'm, I'm getting rid of them. Kind of a two-part thing. A serpent may bite when it is not charmed. The babbler is no different. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. Uh, his own mouth gets him in trouble and it's going to, you know, it's going to be the end of him. He's going to make his own, uh, he's going to get himself in more trouble than he should. And he doesn't realize it. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness. So right away, the fool... You, you, you recognize him because he starts out with just what in the world are you talking about? You know, you don't make any sense. And the end of his talk is raving madness. A fool also multiplies words. No man knows what it is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? The labor of fools wearies him, for they do not even know how to go back to the city. Uh, it's interesting that in verse 14, it doesn't say, I've noticed it doesn't say add wor adds words. It says multiply, my, multiplies words. So not only, I think, uh, it means not only is he just talking too much, he's talking too much, and he's over-exaggerating, and he's most likely lying, and and whatever his message is, it's just, it's just way, way, way more than it should have ever been. Rambling. Rambling just nonsense uh, he's so worried by his work that he can't even find his way home you know he's too tired 
and and it's uh, his thinking's wrong, so he's not approaching uh, wor- uh, work like uh, in a diligent manner. He's he's just he just can't properly accept it or something. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princes feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles and your princes feast at the proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. So the 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 land or the country with the um the proper properly acting king is going to succeed and be blessed. The king that right away at nine o'clock in the morning is feasting or drinking is going to be drunk and can't handle business, you know, but the king that's not right away getting up and drinking in the morning or properly feasting uh, is going to be wise and he's going to be available and he's going to see what's actually going on in his kingdom. Because of laziness, the building decays and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should make a shirt, right? Money make. Yeah. Um, the thing about this, this is all true, right? A party is good for laughs, right? And wine is good for making you merry. And money answers everything or uh, handles everything or money buys everything. Or you can get out a lot of you can get out of a lot of trouble with a ton of money. These things are all true uh, when it comes to humanly thinking. But what about this? These things all have one major thing in common. They're all temporarily. They're all temporary. Party, party, partying is fun, but it only lasts for a while, right? E- even if you continue to party, you know, it only it only brings uh, kidney disease. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> but it's temporary, you know. Dr- uh, drinking, you know, more more than you should is a bad thing and the bible teaches against drunkenness you know the these things these things help other things but it's temporary but what's permanent and and we're gonna get to this later on in chapter 12 the things that are permanent are the things of the lord what 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 can i do how can i invest in my life long term and and the answer is god and jesus christ and the bible you know, I can choose to invest in it short term and and that most likely leads to trouble or I can invest in it long term. And and in the moment here on earth, it 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 seems like this is better, you know, than God. You know, it's this this one's hard, but I'm investing in in my future, in my heavenly future, in in my heavenly home, in my heavenly place. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's this YouTube video about uh, a pastor named Francis Chan. He does this rope thing. Um, he has this very long rope and he tapes like a little bit of red on just a few inches. And he talks about us getting all worried about these in life. Like if the rope was a timeline of our life, our life on earth is this little red section. He goes, we're so like worried and we get so flustered and just so upset about our little 80 years, 70 years worth, when we should be investing into our eternity's worth. And he gets this rope, and kind of like a clown act, he just keeps pulling this rope, and he has this rope, and this rope goes on forever, right? And he's like, we're so worried about this, but what about all this eternity portion? Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. This is where we get that little saying. Little birdie told me. (laughs) We get all these little things from the Bible. We have to be careful what we share with people. and, And who we share 
with. And, and, we, and we have to be careful who we share about. <laughs> right? And even sometimes if we think we share something to someone, even in secret, even if it's just me and this person, you know, no one else is around us. That, that can leak. <laughs> but gossip's a bad thing. And, and the Bible teaches against gossip. And he's just saying, hey, be careful what you say and who you say it to and who you trust things with. And if someone comes to you and has something that they need prayer on or they're confining something private uh, with you and they're trusting you, that those things, those things have to stay private. And, it, and it's so easy and we're, uh, as humans we like to talk and we get in a group. And we like to talk and we like to joke around. But when it comes to like, hey, did you hear about this person? Like, we, if we're, if we're going to talk about someone and they're not there, and we're going to talk to them about, uh, in a way to make them s- sound stupid or make them sound like, oh, uh, did you hear about this person? What an idiot. Or did you hear about what they me- how they messed up? Like, that, that's gossip. So... He warns us about that. A lot of the Bible warns us about that. And um, just, I guess, before you talk to someone about something, just really think about it. And there there are some things in life, uh, kind of how I explain it and how I, this is just in my relationship with God. There are some things in life that I'm not going to tell anybody else. It's between me and God. And, and, And I've sinned against God, and I get my forgiveness from God. So I don't feel like I have to tell anybody else. Uh, And there are things in life that uh, we struggle with, and we have groups for, and we seek counseling on. And then in those situations, that's private and confidential. Give, uh, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on earth. Um, This was kind of tricky because I, in my head, I was picturing like the guy at the park who's throwing bread in the water. And I'm like, what does this even mean? And then the bread comes back to you. And it's kind of like investing, investing in your life. And today we would kind of explain it like investing in money. Uh, the bread would be grain. So I'm, I'm shipping my grain off, you know, upon the waters or, or off to somewhere else. And after many days, I find it or it comes back to me. So I'm, I'm making an investment and after many days, I've gained profit off of it. Give a serving to seven and also to eight. I think this means I'm dividing my stuff up, not in one area. So back to modern day money investing, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. So I'm, I'm willingly, uh, you know, dividing my things up to seven and even eight. And then, um, because I don't know what the future holds or I don't know what the evil earth has as far as, my profit, if that makes sense. Uh, and it's kind of true when it comes to investing. I don't want to have all my stuff in one thing. Um, I don't want to have, you know, I don't know, all my money in one place, I guess. If the clouds are full of rain, they, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. <laughs> yeah, there's just these things. Um, something that something that I saw in this. Um, when, when it comes to choices or how we live in life. If if I'm already headed one way, it's hard to undo, or it's hard to go the other way. So I, I guess a tree, once it starts to fall, that's it. And once you have fallen, you can't pick yourself back up. Or um, God has given us so many years on the earth. And, and um, wherever we fall or whenever we pass, my position that I was in, there I'm, there I'm going to be stuck in. You know, 
Am I a believer and saved? I'm going on to be a believer and saved. Um, am I not saved? Quite frankly, you know, people aren't going to be saved. Uh, we don't get a second chance. Uh, the, the word talks about whatever state you, you pass away in, that's the state you're going to be in. No, uh, no second chances, no take backsies. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. So here we have a picture of a farmer, and he's, he's opening his door, he's stepping out on the porch, and he's going, it's, it's time to sow seed, but it's too windy, so I'm not going to sow seed today. Or it's time to sow seed, and I see a cloud over there, so I'm not going to sow seed today, you know? And then it's time to harvest, and the weather's not good for me to harvest. And there's just, the farmer can't find the perfect time to do what he needs to do. And Solomon says, hey, in the morning, just go out and sow, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand or keep your hand idle. Like go out, like in life, we sometimes get stuck in this, like I'm waiting for this perfect, perfect moment thing. Or in our Christian walk, we get stuck in this, like, um, I'm waiting for this per perfect opportunity. And, and um, there's nothing wrong with waiting for those things, and those times will come. God does bring, like, great opportunity. I say take them, right? If you've been praying for something and it comes along, take it, go for it. But there are just day-to-day -day things. This, so this farmer needs to sow, he needs to harvest, he needs to do whatever he needs to do and he's and he's been holding off and and it's he's not going to harvest anything so we we're going to get be blessed in life by god and part of being blessed in life by god is us getting up and doing our day-to-day -day stuff so and we're not going to succeed or get blessed if we're just if we're just waiting back here and not putting our faith into action because those perfect days aren't, aren't going to be there all the time. Truly the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that is coming is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart, and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart, and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. So he's saying, hey, rejoice in your youth. You know, uh, have cheer, have a cheery heart. Um, I, I guess use your youth to its full advantage, you know, what... Um, walk, walk in the way you want to walk or live in the way you want to live. And, and just to make sure we don't, uh, um, you know, just to make sure we don't go wild. He, he's including, but don't forget about God and that God sees you, you know, don't forget to reverence God and God judges everything you do. So now he's going into this advice for older people and younger people. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are now darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, and the days, and the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim. So we're, we're, we're talking about older people and younger people. And how... And w why is he talking about windows and grinders and keepers? And what? how does this 
line up with older and younger people. The keepers of the house tremble. He's talking about legs. And we're, uh, we're in the older person section. <laughs> when the strong men bow down, he's talking about shoulders. So he's, he, he's describing the older person and what's going to happen and uh, what's going to physically happen to your body. The grinders are your teeth. Your, the grinders cease because they are few. Those that look through the windows uh, would be like your eyes. You can't, you can't hardly see anymore. They grow dim. When the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one raises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low, uh, the doors being shut would be your opportunities are now fading and you and you you're not really able to go out and do anything the sound of the grinding again your teeth um the music brought low would be your hearing you're losing your hearing so he's trying to make a point he's saying hey look now uh pay attention to all this st stuff before you get older and he's going to continue also that they are afraid of height and a terror and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails for man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Afraid of heights or afraid of falling terrors in the way. Um, there, there's too much danger outside or there's too much going on outside. I'm, I'm going to stay inside the house. The almond tree blossom um, is the first tree to blossom in, in the spring. And they're white. So I believe it connects with having white hair. And then he says, for man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Or the uh, mourners uh, go to your funeral. So he's, he's saying, hey, before the end, remember your creator in the days of, you, of your youth. It's, uh, it's more beneficial and life is better and life is easier and you're, you're, you're better off if, if you come to Christ now. You know what I mean? When you're young is what he's saying. Uh, you can come to Christ at any age. It is never too late. We, we just, uh, the goal is that someone, uh, the goal is that we're out spreading the gospel and the message and, and we don't want someone to, to pass in their sin. We want everyone to be saved. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well or, um, which each, each one of those things has its ending. You know what I mean? The pitcher shattered. Well, that's no, you know, no more pitcher. Or the wheel of the well is broken. You can't draw any more water. Um, come to God before the end. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to, the, to God who gave it. Vanities, vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. So again, he repeats his main point. He's saying everything in life that I've examined and considered as the wisest man, it's just meaningless. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words and what was written was upright words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the works of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. Uh, the stuff that is written in the Bible is truth. <laughs> many, many other proverbs that Solomon have, have, has written is truth. It's like a goad, or it's like a pokey stick, right? Wisdom is like a pokey stick. It's to get us 
What what was the goad used for? The rancher pokes the cow. Hey, get moving. <laughs> Wisdom is puts us in the right spot, in the right place. And it's upright, and it's truth. And it's from the shepherd, or from God. And further, my son, be admonished by these, of making many books, there is no end, and much study is worrisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So now, here's his whole major conclusion of the whole 12 chapters of the book. Let us hear the con uh, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. So now we have a major contrast from all is worthless and meaningless to, um, and it answers the question, why am I here on earth or what am I to be doing? If everything is meaningless and worthless, but we're not to be stuck in that thinking now, but what am I supposed to be doing? Keeping God's commandments and fearing God. Uh, why have we been put here on earth? Um, we've been put here in the, uh, we've been made in the image of God. <laughs> we've been put here as God's servant. We've been put here because we have a job to do. You know, when you sum all the things up, I've been appointed to be here. <laughs> it wasn't random. I'm not here by mistake. You know, I wasn't born by mistake. I wasn't an accident. Uh, God has put me here. I'm saved. I've accepted him as my savior. And, and, and then now after that step, I'm to learn about God and his character and how he is. And I do that with the word and the word teaches me that we have a job to do. <laughs> and we've all been given a gift in the church and we're all supposed to assemble at church and we're not to neglect that. Right. Right. And, and I guess all of my hope or all of my all or all of my all or all of my energy or all of my thinking or all of my life, it should be all in fearing God and keeping his commandments, living for God, doing the will of God, you know, carrying out my ministry, taking heed to my ministry, serving as a leader, you know. Serving as a mother, a father, a spouse, serving as a friend, you know, serving at work or in full-time ministry or in a parachurch group. What, what, where should my focus be? If it can't be on the vanity of vanity, it should be on God. It should be on the word. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. He sees everything we do, good, bad. He's going to judge us on it. You know, the, the Christian is, is going to go to heaven and he's going to be released and forgiven of judgment because of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus steps in as the advocate, you know, and says, no, 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 not this guy. You know, I've washed his sins. Uh, uh, they're white as snow. I've stepped in. I take his place. But if you're not in a relationship with Christ and you haven't accepted him, you're going to get judged. You face a different judgment than the Christians. The Christian's judgment, I think, is more of a, a, a rewarding judgment. And there is a heaven and a hell. And if you're not with Christ, we know that you're going to get judged. You're going to go to hell. Just being honest. As a minister of God, I have to be honest. So again, if it's not, you know, let's do a recap throughout the whole book. We've talked about knowledge and wisdom, you know, the, the chasing academic thing, which is not bad, but it can't be your all. You can't be saved by academics. You know, we've talked about the mirth or the parties or the entertainment and the drinking, you know, those, those things aren't bad, and I have to restate that 
It is wrong to get drunk. The Bible does say, say that. If you want to uh, listen to a great Bible study about drinking, Pastor Mike Winger did one. It's on YouTube. But I just have to say that, right? But you can't cling on those things. They're not your all. There's, there's no hope. There's no value. You know, we've talked about money and riches, and Solomon had all those stuff. He had 700 wives, or he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. You know, it's okay to be married to one wife. <laughs> have to throw that in there. But, but it's much more than that. It's about God. It's about serving God. And I think that's what the whole book of Ecclesiastes is about, amongst other things. You know, look at all these things. It's, it's kind of like the other half of, you know, God will save you. He'll protect you. He'll lift you up. He'll change you. You know, your life will never be the same. And that's all true. And this is the, you can't cling to drinking. You can't cling to partying. You can't cling to money. You can't cling, cling to academics, you know. You can't cling to all these earthly things because they're temporary. The bottom's just going to fall out. I was thinking about something today. Uh, when, it came, when it comes to that, that verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 9, about the feasting and about the wine and about the money and all that stuff. It's like, I was thinking today, um, it's so true. We, we try to find satisfaction in these things. I like to buy things. I like to look on Amazon, check out the deal of the day. Oh, you know, I need this, you know. Oh, this is cool. I want to buy this. The last thing I bought's in the corner, not even using it, still in the box. You know what I mean? And it's like, do I really need this? But it's so true. Even, even, um... Uh, even in our walks with Christ, we're, we're trying to get that, that comfort or get that, get that hope or satisfaction from something else, you know, and we, we chase something and it's like, no, I need to come back to God. We chase something. Do I really need that? No, I, sh I just need to rely on God. That's what it's about, relying on God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We ask that you uh, would lead us to... Um, another book in your word that you would like us to study and to hear. Um, we thank you so much. Um, we ask that you help us um, in life because um, we, we do need a place to live and a job and we do, need, we do need material things, Lord, and we sometimes think that it's bad or we shouldn't have a lot of it or... Um, or we, or we tend to be like, I want all of it. So help us, help us find that middle. Help bless us with the, just the right amount, Lord. Uh, so we're, we're trusting in you and your provision, Lord. I pray for a blessing over this group. Uh, keep guiding us and leading us. And I pray for each person here, Father God, that you would bless them at work, school, um, in their lives at home. In Jesus' name, amen.